Hello and welcome to this special anniversary DVD celebrating 20 years of British Railway modelling. I'm John Emerson, the editor of BRM, and I'm delighted to be here today with Tony Wright. Tony, I think you, uh, rank me in some regards, because you've been with the magazine since day one. I've only been with the magazine for 15 years. Have you got any stories about how the magazine started? Well, one or two. Um, well, I was in my workshop in Wolverhampton in October 1992. The phone went, and a chap called David Brown introduced himself and said that he was the editor of a brand new model railway magazine. It was going to be high quality, high quality photography, presentation, printing, etc. And would I be interested in being a freelance photographer? The first shoot was early in 1993, and the magazine came out in March 93, didn't it? Thursday, March the 11th, 1993. Right. I had to drive to Portsmouth, do the shoot, Midsummer Norton. It's our first leg, yes. Get the transparencies to the lab. Next day, get them to Warner's, and I had one shot at it. And it worked. And the rest, as they say, is history. history. And of course, the magazine has been built on uh, quality photography and the new colour printing technology which yes. was happening at the time yeah because uh, prior to that most of the magazines were black and white and i think you've got a phrase you used to use for black and white photography in the magazines um what's that <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember what it was <laughs> oh god what do you used to call Sutton it whitewash Sutton whitewash that was what i was trying to get Can we me? cut to that <laughs> i mean without doubt it was a revolution so i was very fortunate and privileged to be in right from the start mm, mm. and I've been through and what about you because I knew you before you were famous in as much as <laughs> the Haley uh, Mills days and that's so. right I had a, a layout a four mil scale layout which was Haley Mills which was um, at the time contemporary uh, with, with what was happening on the um, on, on the railway on the Protestant railway and yeah. uh, had a, an inquiry from David Brown who was the editor and the layout went to the magazine in 1994. 1994. I've got a copy, so we'll yeah, have a look, we'll have at, a look at that in a moment. Yes, yes, bring back some memories. Um, and ended up as production editor starting in 97, 97, 98. Mm -hmm. And um, I've risen to the dizzy heights of editor <laughs> for the last 11 years or so. Well, and this is the famous Hayley Mills. Famous which Hayley Mills. I think that's the first time I really got to know you. I photographed it, if you recall. At the Wolverhampton show, show. Yes, yes, indeed, we, yes, we took over the whole, whole hall and drained the national grid with all the lights and had great fun and my new Pullman train ran on it, didn't it? That's right, I do have some photographs which are uh, not as good as your photographs but I did take some pics of the uh, Pullman train actually running on the layout. A Pullman train that was described in an early issue of BRM ah. by the way, <laughs> How to Build the Queen of Scots. Excellent. So should we have a look at some of our favourite layouts that have uh, appeared in the magazine over the last few years? Yes, and perhaps we ought to say this is just a selection. Well, there's been um, so many layouts in the magazine, hasn't there? 800 or so, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So, so, so for those who are not mentioned, well... Our it, apologies. It, our apologies. But um, if I go first with my old chum, Roy Jackson, is building Retford, in my opinion, the finest model railway ever made. It's where I used to train spot when I was a kid. Retford appeared, well, it's appeared several times, but principally October 2007, volume 15, number seven. Good friend Roy Jackson, building Retford in EM gauge. Some of the operators, that's Roy in the middle. It's much more developed than this now. It's magnificent. It's contained in a shed, well, a building nearly 100 feet long. And it's an actual location. It's an actual your, location. One ah, one of my <laughs> bees in my bonnet, yes, an actual location. And there's one on the front, John, which um, appeals to you. Uh, well, this is O-Gage. This is uh, Pete Waterman's Leamington Spa project. And um, again, this is an ongoing project, the, uh, which we're, we're revisiting uh, for another photo shoot in the near future. Prototype-based um, as well? Prototype-based again. Um, a labour of love, really, because it's based on, uh, it's, it's a nostalgic uh, trip again, it's based on um, areas of the country where he used to go train spotting when he was a young lad, I believe, as well, so we grew up. A contemporary a of contemporary. mine. Oh, yeah, indeed. But well, um, I'm a tiny bit old. <laughs> and uh, he, he's um, very fortunate in having the help of a lot of guys who've come along to um, help build the layout. Um, and a huge collection of stock which runs on it. It's, it's a magnificent um, showcase, really, of... Uh, steam and diesel um, traction in that uh, 1950s, early 60s period. 
Another one that took your fancy? Um, yes, this is a 2 mil scale layout, 2 mil fine scale layout, Chi Tor, which appeared in the October 2005 issue. Uh, again, it's photography by Tony, and it's the Manchester Model Railway Society's tour de force, really. It's, it's a, a fantastic uh, uh, layout with um, wonderful scenery on there. Um, it was a huge draw at the time on the exhibition circuit. There was crowds two or three deep every time it appeared at the shows. And it was uh, quite a coup for the magazine. I believe it's in private hands now. It I is. It yeah. exists, doesn't it? But that was a fantastic layout and, and one of my favourites over the uh, years I've been involved with the magazine. Another one from you, Tony? My choice, next choice, <coughs> is one from the early days, the of early days, September 1996 BRM. And it's by, sadly now deceased, a dear friend of mine, Tom Harland, who was a professional artist and his creation was Bramblewick, the Robin Hood's Bay bit of the Yorkshire coast in P4, set in northeastern days. The artistic flair is magnificent. This, this, this is my photograph, and I don't think I've done it justice, to be honest with you, because when you saw Bramblewick, the aerial perspective was perfect. And perhaps I mentioned too, the artistry in the locomotive, this is by a chap called Paul Moore, a chap from the northeast, who built this Northeastern 060 and painted it as well. So although Tom did most of the scenic work, a lot of the stock was the work of others and many of the best model railways are a team effort, aren't they? Indeed. Well, the next one that uh, it particularly takes my uh, fancy is um, Topness in Engage by John Burkett Smith, which appeared in the January 2009 uh, issue. Uh, quite a recent um, uh, layout in the magazine. Now, in my own modelling, I, I, I like co gauge, I like uh, London Middle and the Scottish sort of prototypes, but I do have a great admiration for God's wonderful railway. Mm. And Topness uh, in N gauge, I think, is one of the best N gauge layouts I've seen. Prototype based? Prototype based again, yes, indeed. Um, and a, again, a great favourite, always draws a crowd at shows, and uh, a great credit to its builder. We're on to the next one now, May 2008, and, and Jeff Kent's Blakeney. Now, Jeff is a friend of Roy Jackson and has helped him with several of the joint projects. But this was Blakeney, this was Jeff's own work. Some of the stock was provided by Roy. Now, this isn't prototype based, I admit. In fact, if you've ever been to Blakeney or anywhere along that Norfolk coast, Haysborough, for instance, that layout for the Model Railway Club, yes. um, Really, very few people would have built a railway there. I played cricket there, and apart from some vast churches, there's just about nothing else. But this is the sort of thing that might have been built. It's, again, an EM gauge. It's absolutely exquisite. Um, Jeff and I are contemporaries, in as much as he's a Sestri, and that's a native of Chester. He's a year older than me. Um, only contemporary in terms of we were born in the same place. He went to the King's School, I went to Overly Secondary Modern, so he was bright and I was dim. But um, it really is fantastic. He's one of the best modellers, all-round modellers in the country. Um, these buses, for instance, are all scratch-built. Built, He's yes. a magician in yes, plastic absolutely. art. Absolutely. He There's paints a... everything, he makes everything. It makes me sick. <laughs> um, finally, Another Manchester one. Finally, another one from the Manchester Model Railway Club is Dewsbury Midland, uh, this time in 4 mil 00, and that appeared in the February 2003 issue. Um, curiously, this was also photographed by Mr Wright, as I think in all the layouts that we've looked at this morning have been. I couldn't comment. <laughs> um, again, another tour de force, uh, some fantastic buildings by uh, Jeff, Jeff Taylor. Jeff Taylor. Uh, who's also built uh, a lot of the buildings on uh, Cliff Parsons. Bradley Beach, hasn't yeah. he? And um, it, it is another crowd puller, it uh, shows it's um, an excellent layout and it's been one of our favourites in the magazine. So that's our selection of some of the top layouts that we've seen in the magazine so far. John, we've looked at some of our favourites that have appeared in the magazine, but they're also the ones that have appeared on DVD. And one of the most important, I think, is Copenhagen Fields from the Model Railway Club. This is a fantastic recreation of the main line out of King's Cross, the great northern main line between the tunnels and just north of the tunnels. Another prototype location. And something of a vested interest, isn't it? 
and it's it really takes no prisoners, does it? It's as accurate as they could possibly make it. A lot of research has gone into it, indeed. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And anybody who's seen the magnificent 1955 film, The Lady Killers, it was filmed in Mrs. Wilberforce's house, Mrs. Lopsided, on top of Copenhagen Tunnel. And she appears on the layout and the film crew as well. Yeah. Anyway, we've got some footage of Copenhagen Fields, which will appear on this presentation, although right. it has already been shot and is available as a DVD in the Right Track series. So it's appeared in print, now you can see it in action. So here we are looking at Copenhagen Fields, or Copenhagen Fields, mm. by the Model Railway Club, and uh, it's a very long-lived layout. Well, we said, didn't we, it's um, outlived many of its creators. It has indeed, yes. And it's yeah. called Titanic when they box it all up. Is that you right? That, That's yeah. something I didn't know to know. Uh, no, no. But it's really been built principally in two sections. Did yes. you know that? I, from reading through the article, it, which was quite interesting in the magazine, it uh, describes how the, the sort of genesis of the project and how it's come together. Um, and yes, I had seen that they were building it in sections. Because the first bit that was exhibited, still is exhibited, yeah. is the bit north of Copenhagen, Copenhagen Tunnel, yeah. up to where the Caledonian Road crosses over. Um, now, the Caledonian Road is still there, and the bridge is still there, but so in order to get it round the bend, as it's, it's been were, tweaked a bit, hasn't the, it? <laughs> the angle of the Caledonian Road is the wrong way. That's right, so yes. People yes. look at it. They and still they can't figure it out. It's still very recognisable, though, although some of the buildings have, uh, have long since disappeared. Well, in, in 2007 or so, 2008, I went down to this part of London mm. and photographed the buildings that are still, still extant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one or two still are, whether they're still in their original use. Obviously, Caledonian Road Station. Yes. But I was yeah. able to get to the site of the Lady Killers, oh, which overlooks yes. Belle Isle, which is the second part of the project, yes. with yeah. the North London line going across. And for once, I had a very, very helpful civil servant. It, <laughs> the, the actual site, which was Caledonian Road Goods Yard, is now a council depot. Mm, mm. And um, the gates were open, yeah. and I just said to this bloke, do you mind if I come in? And he, he let you in. Not at all. And what was nice is this, <clears throat> none of this sort of Palisade fencing. Mm, mm. You could leave the, 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 the parapet was really oh, I see, yes, quite yeah, low. Yeah, and, um, yeah. yeah it, it was just back in time. Um, but I suppose what's nice, and this comes back again to prototype modelling, is it does actually exist. I mean, what they've done is really encapsulated a period. It, it's not one single period. Mm, mm. Do, do you know that? From it's, the 20s to the 40s. Well, you've got Great Northern stuff yeah. running and yeah. you've got North London Railway stuff running across the viaduct. And you've, you've also got stuff which is anachronistic, but Great Northern stuff... As I understand stuff, it, it's modelling an area of outstanding unnatural beauty. Unnatural beauty. But all the trains are correct. The Flying Scotsman is correct yes. for the early 20s. And then they have the Silver Jubilee and the Coronation and the Yorkshire Pool. But the research that must have gone into it and the diligence, because... The depth of research is quite phenomenal, really. Mm. You know, records, maps, uh, library records, all sorts of things. And a lot of perspective modelling. Very much about, so, yes. yes. That's an interesting point. The buildings further away a sort of half a millimetre scale. That's right. And it doesn't look forced. And not uh, fully built, are they? Some of them are wooden no, blocks no. with photostatted... Uh... But the effect is yes. entirely convincing. Yeah, very well, nice. Every time you go near it, if you can get near it, <laughs> absolutely packed out. I think it's fantastic. I mean, I suppose I, I'm, it, it's, it's my subject. It's the Eastern Region Main Line. It's the southern end of the Great Northern Main Line. I think what appeals to me as well is the single-mindedness that... You know you're starting this project. It, it is a, a heck of a project, isn't it? And I, I can't think of any more, uh, any other projects that are similar in, in scope and breadth. Well, some of the older guys must have known they'd be dead yes, before it indeed, was finished. Yeah, so yeah. Um, hats off to them. But I don't know, what is the time scale for the Model Railway Club to finish it? Uh, did I hear someone saying it's another 10 years or so? Well, they said that 20 years ago when the ERM started. <laughs> probably, another 10 probably years. probably open-ended 10 years. They'll have poor old, like pendant. Yeah, poor old Tim will be wheeled out years. in his, <laughs> his chair in his Zimmer frame and he'll just put the finishing touches <laughs> and then 
um, decomposed, like a <laughs> sort of been. We look forward to it in our shows. Alive, yeah. uh, yet again. His teeth will still be perfect, though. So, <laughs> but I, I, going back, I keep on reiterating this, but but modelling a prototype. The station is as big as it is, mm. the buildings mm. that are still standing and those that they've had to sort of recreate from photographs. I think, as you said, there's been a little bit of foreshortening, hasn't there, on the length of the lanes? Oh, the, the, the bit between the, 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 the north and south um, tunnel mouths of Copenhagen yes. tunnel yeah. are yeah. much protracted. Yeah. But it, it, that doesn't... It, it captures the atmosphere it, it captures, fantastically. And they've got a bit of underground as well. And trams. Yes, working trams. Yeah, so it's fantastic. On the locomotive and stock side, so is, is it all Mod Railway Club members who've built it? Yes, or? I think so. Um, and some of them, in, in fairness, some of them um, are modified RTR. Mm. The A4s mm. are mm. from two origins. Yeah. Um, would you believe that one of them is an old Lone Star push-along? Goodness. Goodness. It's Minion of Kennedy. Now, that's something I didn't know. The silver one mm. is a Farish modified, mm. but I suppose with Dapots come out, coming out there. May well get replaced. Well, I don't know. I mean, mm. they're, they're, they're very high standard. But um, no, they didn't. In, in fairness, they're, they're pragmatic enough to give the basic model. I mean, they throw well, the chassis away. Yes, obviously, yes. Yeah. Um, or fiddle with them. But with a project that size, that's going to be the way to, to go in a lot of instances, isn't it? Mm. You know, a lot of the stock. But they're a decent set of chaps as well. And they have that, that nice view with the television camera, a little mini camera underneath That's the television. That's right, yes. It surprises there. everybody when they see that and uh, trains hurtling by. Because it appeared on Blue Peter, did you know that? Uh, Before yes. Before the Model Railway Club show. Um, that's going back a few years. They said it, it was Engage. <laughs> they know nothing. They Why know do nothing. TV presenters know nothing about... I don't know, do you? Well, obviously you can see I'm in my shed with my train set all around me, but what might be of interest in view of the 20 years of BRM is how I used to do photography for the magazine. And it was with this vast contraption, a Mamiya Super 23. The ground glass screen, you need a whacking great tripod, you look at the image inverted, use far more light than you need today, and I used to lug this around, and a layout shoot would take about five hours. Candid shots were shot on this contraption, a Nikon F, unbeatable. The Vietnam camera, the cameraman was blown to pieces, the next guy came along, picked up the camera and carried on shooting. Digital now, all digital. And in fairness, I've just done a review for BRM on Backman's latest D11 II, all these were shot digitally, much, much quicker. But quality, I'm ambivalent. And then we're moving from one model railway club to another. This is T Bay, which is the Shipley Model Railway Society, I think, isn't it? Not Model Railway Club. And uh, T Bay first appeared in the magazine in September 1994. Um, was also one of our very first video productions back in 1997, I believe. Um, it's an excellent layout that's again off the exhibition circuit now, but uh, in private hands, I think. It has, it's been sold. Been sold. And um, another actual location mm -hmm. where banking took place at T Bay on the climb to Shap. And that was well replicated on the layout. I think it's one of the very few layouts where I've actually seen banking operations mm -hmm. take place. And not DCC, I And not pre DCC. <laughs> pre DCC. <laughs> And uh, as I say, this is VHS uh, video quality, but let's have a look at T-Bay. This is T-Bay from the Shipley Model Railway yeah. Society. I mean, considering this was shot in 1997, mm. it's pretty good, but technology moves on and CineRail now offer it on, on DVD. DVD, and it was our first... Very first... Uh, very first BRM very first DVD. programme, yes, indeed, yes. But, yeah. Followed by Biggles Wave. Vi video it was in those mm. days, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, but um, it is available from CineRail, and I recommend it. It's a fairly accurate model of, yes. uh, of a prototype location. Well, it's at the foot of Shap in the yes. Loon Gorge. Actually, the Loon Gorge isn't a gorge, is it? You can only have gorges in limestone, but yes. whatever. But <laughs> we'll it is a away. very, very famous location, and the, 
they'd modelled the bridge over the River Loon and the sort of trains that one would have seen in the 1950s and early 60s. Well, it's one of the few layouts I've seen on the exhibition, when it was on the exhibition circuit, where I've actually recognised some of the train formations yeah. going round. So and it then, says a lot for it. Of course, here we've got a replication of banking, yep. which was common, and they've modelled that very successfully. Very successfully. We've got an 8F here on a typical freight heading southwards. The only thing, if, if it were a criti criticism, and am I allowed to criticise, what well, another B in my bonnet, a working signal. Mm, mm. And their signals were accurate, but they but didn't work. But they never did get them working. But, but we've got head headlamp codes. We have the correct headlamp codes and the wide variety of locomotives. Mm, I mm. mean, if you drive up the M6 today and you follow the line, it's Pendolinos and 66. Uh, that's right, yes, all under the wires, yes. Yeah. Hardly notice going up uh, sharp these days. No, yeah. Mind you, the trains hardly notice, mm. do they? Mm. The speed is the same going up as it is coming down. But a very accurate model of the way the station used to be. It was a junction with the northeastern, which then took say, you over yes. the Pennines yes. to Barnard Castle, yes. was it? And was that to the other Clapham Junction, or was that another route? No, I think, I think there was another route. This went through Kirby Stevens yes. and yes. over the top at... Um, Stainmore mm. to Barnard Castle and and so on. So they've modelled that the little the little northeastern 060 coming in with its train of empty, empty minerals. Of course, that line came into its own on summer Saturdays yes. with excursions from the northeast yes. across to the Fylde coast. But typical trains, accurate trains. We've got a Royal Mail train Crystal. here. Yes. Um, possibly the one that was um, robbed in 1963. Well, it had a diesel on, not a semi. <laughs> yeah. And of course, th th they've been able to tie that in because, again, it's a prototype location with actual shots of the real railway. But you know, the architectural modelling as well. They, 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 I take my hat off to the research that goes into oh, this. Oh, yes, yes. And the individual modelling. <clears throat> you know, I keep on coming back to that, but I think that's essential. The, the, the research, the model making, the whole thing is of the highest quality. I know when people say it's only double O gauge, can you tell that it's only 16.5 at this range? But the road running is excellent as well, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. What we have got here? Oh, it's a maroon princess coronation on carmine and cream stock. I think there was a bit of flexibility, isn't there, in the running period that yes. uh, they used to have? Uh, they run typical things. Yes. I mean, one of the things yes. you'll, you'll have seen are the, the prototype diesel. That's right. 10,000, yeah. 10,001. Yeah. And then they go up to, well, maroon. I think the, the bankers started off, weren't they, the Fo uh, Fowler 264 tanks, yes. I think, and then they became the standard uh, 260s or 46460s, I think, yes. uh, in, in latter days. But th this is a, a wonderful arrangement, the sort of arrangement, the variety, I mean, the 3F there, Fowler 264 tank, Black 5 in the background, another 264 tank, a 4F, another 264 Fowler tank. Mm -hmm. Turntable? Interesting the use of uh, the old Hornby W style couplings as well. Yes. It's something you don't see so much of these days. No. Um, well, obviously, it worked. It their, okay. Yes, it was <laughs> their chosen one. But this, this lovely variation mm. from the Royal Scot by the look going back, and it's City of Salford. How did I know that? The last one built. It's in green, mm. isn't it? Stania. Um, was in maroon for their period. Caprotti Black Fives, yes, yeah. Yep. I built one of those. Um, it featured in BRM umpteen years ago. But, that, <laughs> but obviously that skew arch bridge is still there. But I doubt if you can get that sort of shot. Because it'll be covered in greenery. Lots of greenery, yeah, it's overgrown. And double heading. I mean, it's again this sort of standard of model making and the interior and of the signal box. Yes, yeah, all, all fully all fully done. Magnificent. Well, it was nice to see that 
old footage, wasn't it? And it's nice to see it again. Yes, yeah, and, yes. and it's the only way really to see it. Because I remember seeing it at uh, one of our shows. I think it was the one of the Doncaster shows mm. um, when you could stand up in the gallery and look down on the layouts in the very, in the very good, very good. And it was excellent. Yes, mm. yeah. but one of the finest model railways ever built, without a doubt. <laughs> Readers of BRM will be well aware that this is my layout, little by them, once again East Coast Main Line, once again prototype based. And right from the word go, it's featured in the pages of BRM. There's been an inter interregnum, as it were, but uh, I hope to get writing about it and completing more of it. And I think the, the making is very important, isn't it, John? That it is. We're, we're both modelers, aren't we? We're both modelers, so, so not only just. Hopefully we might even know what we're talking about. Right? Yes, <laughs> we don't just write about it or photograph them, we actually make. But this is double though, this is the scale I've mm. chosen. It is a group project, but you've graduated from double O, double O, double O. Uh, yes, I model in uh, seven mil, O gauge, 32 mil uh, track gauge, with my layout Gifford Street, which readers may have seen on the exhibition circuit. It's also featured in BRM. Many times in BRM. Occasions. Yes. It's, uh, it's actually now off the exhibition circuit, so it's, it's having a, uh, a bit of a retirement, although we've, we've got, still got lots of work to do to it. But it has been an enjoyable exercise, and I think it demonstrates that we're both practical models. Well, it's, a, it's an ongoing building uh, project, right, isn't it? right, yes, yeah. That needs to be stressed time and time again. You're never finished in the, in the hobby, are you? You've always got something to do on the layout, and I think that's the case with, uh, with, with Gifford Street. So happy modelling. Happy modelling. Which brings me on to what was effectively my layout, Stoke Summit, and I do apologise for people who think it's been seen far too much. It's now off the exhibition circuit, but in 15 years it did 70 shows, which I don't think is bad. It's not bad at all. East Coast Main Line, prototype based, the trains are right, I've written about it, ad infinitum, ad nauseam, Many some times. people might say. Um, it's been very successful. I built most of the locos. <clears throat> Ian Rathbone painted them. It's also available in the Right Track series on famous layouts, and that's available. And I shot a fair bit of that. DVD, even though I'm a still photographer, um, I sort of muddled through making some decent DVD shots at shows. And I hope you enjoy these clips that follow showing it. And now we're going to take a look at Stoke Summit, a four mil scale layout, double O gauge layout, which uh, I will actually hand over to Tony because Tony is the man, or one of the men, responsible for mm. it. Tell us all about it. Thank you, John. Well, first of all, if I apologise, because it has been seen and so seen... Many so many times. So many times, and there were locos of Stoke Summit. It appeared not just in BRM, but in Morrill, in MRJ. Yes, it did, yes. In our so news pages, and in the news pages. pages yes, and it was, the, it was the background for just about every new locomotive to be That's tested right, and yes. photographed. Yep. So it, you can we go away, make a, make a cup of tea, or... Um, it, it, if I said that all layouts are unique, but I think at the time the concept was revolutionary. It, uh, I have to put that, it's, it's Wolverhampton Model Railway Club built it, and I was part of a team yeah. of six or seven, yeah. where we just had nothing but railway. And the theory behind it, or the thinking behind it, was that whatever ra railway you model, and this was a prototype model, the most typical, mm. now for every station there must be hundreds of no, tens of miles of track doing nothing but yeah. passing through countryside yeah. and not necessarily grand countryside. One of the pet hates I had as far as modelling was concerned, I've seen so many layouts where, let's see, there's a church, right? What's going on in the church? Not a wedding. A wedding. And on the other side? A funeral. A funeral. And what's happening in the road outside? Uh, there wouldn't be a car crash. A car crash. And what's attending the car crash? A fire engine. That's it, yes. Right? And in the field opposite, there's a fox hunt. And in the next field, an aeroplane has crashed. Magnificent setting for oh, a collection yes, of yes. but... And the aeroplane has just missed the windmill yep. that's whirling round. Yes. Next to the waterfall. And the railway makes a right-angle bend into a tunnel. Mm -hmm. 
in the so middle of nowhere. They've never looked at the real thing. You need sometimes, whatever it is, whether it's a painting or a sculpture, somewhere for the eye to rest. That's right. Somewhere yes. just that you can observe. Yep. The East Coast Main Line is, for those who know where I live, just over there. It's where the four track section from Peterborough went into two to cross the Witham Welland watershed. A bit of alliteration, yes. that's some interesting yes. English gone into that. And it went into a tunnel, a modest tunnel. It's the highest point on the East Coast Main Line in Lincolnshire. Right. So all those blokes and women who think that Lincolnshire's flat, this is the highest point on the East Coast Main Line between London and Edinburgh. It's very simple, it's four tracks into two. The only building, other than a, a, a tiny little shed, is the signal box. Yep. You have a classic yes. Um, GNR style tunnel mouth and a three arch overbridge. Mm -hmm. But what we did, we would make it to run the trains. And we didn't know whether it would work conceptually. We knew at Wolverhampton we could make it work physically. But would it be successful? Just trains going round. Just watching the trains go by. Well, one chap um, I saw at one show looked at it and said, this is just trains going round. Look, there's another, and there's another. I shook his hand. <laughs> it's great praise. Um, he didn't think much of it. But what we decided to do is make the trains the thing. Now, yeah. when I say I, I model a prototype, the trains on this line, the East Coast Main Line, in the 1950s, early 60s, my train spotting hand were there were more name trains than on any mm. other section of mm. line apart from I think perhaps from rugby to Euston yeah. when the Birmingham yeah. trains came in and what have you but famous trains flying Scotsman the Elizabethan the Queen of Scots the Talisman yeah. the Teestein yeah. Pullman we made all these I got hold of BR's official records and amongst us we made the actual train so each train is effectively unique not like today where a 91 and eight cars and DVTs in Samuel. If you want to go really fast and get to London quickly, that's the best thing to have. But we made these trains. Trains originating from Gresley or Thompson or BR Mark I. And the same with the freight. Although freight was perhaps more ubiquitous, there were long wheelbase fish vans that, yes. that ran on yeah. the yeah. Um, blue spots. Yes. Yeah. So trains of those were made. Cement trains that the um, there was a cliff Uddingston cement yes. block train, so that was made. And it was very, very important that these trains were right. And I've written about them, as I say, mm -hmm. ad nauseam. Mm -hmm. And um, people are, well, you can't go to 70 shows in 15 years and not have something mm -hmm. worthwhile. Mm -hmm. No exhibition manager is going to have. Um, a layout that's no good. I mean, they might do it once. As I recollect, there was always a crowd on the layout. You could never see it. Mm. But this idea of just plain track, a couple of points, well, three points, and just the trains going by, I think it worked. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm proud to have been associated. I mean, it's finished on the exhibition circuits now. It's had its day, and that, that's fair enough. And some of the trains are perhaps a little bit tired. But the correct locomotives with the correct train formations and headlamps yes, yes. and headboards yes. it proved to be very and very tailors. popular and all the variety of locomotives the Pacifics on the LNER were more numerous and with more variety than on any other railway so the Thompson Pacific varieties, the Gresley Pacific, the Peppercorn and then all the smaller ones so all the appropriate locomotives. Was it limited to one particular period? or It was slightly it? flexible. It's, it's unashamedly my train spotting period yeah. from 1956 to about 1961-62. You did run some, or used to run some diesels as well. Oh yes, yeah. it, it's run in diesel mode yeah. because it, it remained, the signal remained until yes. the early 70s. Yeah. So yeah. we did run blue diesels, mm. not with the steam. No, but no. The blue diesel period pr proved to be pretty, pretty popular, but um, if you're fed up with it, then I do apologise, but it was great fun. If not, buy it. If not, buy it. It could be for sale. <laughs> Considering the latest RTR 00 gauge locomotives, I am a locomotive builder, but you have stuff like this. This is Hornby's current A3. Absolutely magnificent. 
who's going to need to build an A3 anymore? And with Backman, we have a link with BRM. <clears throat> and this is our second uh, limited edition locomotive. In fact, it was the last locomotive to be built, last steam locomotive to be built at Doncaster. It was indeed. And uh, performer on the line, I understand it ran like... R ran in, so ran in, this is yeah. on a, a pickup goods. I apologise for it not having a headlamp, but <laughs> it will. And that's still available, you can order that on our website, on through the magazine. And we also have here the very first limited edition locomotive that we did. This is City of Peterborough, BR standard, uh, standard 5460, which is preserved on the Neen Valley Railway. Unfortunately that's sold out, so you've missed your chance to get that one. And you might also be interested to see, uh, these are from the uh, BRM Vault, these are our very first limited ed edition wagons. Uh, this was particularly successful. Year 2000, limited 2000, edition. 2000, yes, as long ago as that. This one sold out in, uh, I think in seven weeks. So that's quite a valuable one. You can get them on eBay at massive <laughs> prices. You can do indeed, yes. So this is our final video favourite. Uh, it's a, a layout called Westcliff by Richard Butler and it was filmed at Ali Pali in 2012 and it appeared in the magazine in 2009. It's uh, got a connection with the, uh, the very first layout that we uh, had in BRM because it's by uh, a member of the South Hans Model Railway Club. So it's quite a nice little tie-in. It's a beautiful uh, layout in the end gauge. It's presented as a 3D picture. Yes. And uh, very cunningly, Richard uh, wrote in his article that uh, he was a bit worried about modelling uh, water, the waves lapping on the beach. So he actually recorded uh, the sound of the waves, so you actually get this very nice rolling wave effect uh, across the front of the layout. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you see it at uh, one of the shows soon. Enjoy Westcliff. So for our final uh, video viewing, we're looking at uh, Richard Butler's Westcliff, Westcliff. Westcliff. EM gauge uh, this time, and uh, Great Western, nothing wrong with Great Western, thoroughly enjoy it. Down in Dorset, it uh, represents a line that uh, comes to the coast, a nice terminus station, or terminal station, and uh, plenty of, well we've got a freight train here, but plenty of uh, holiday excursions, holiday traffic, um, and plenty of Great Western locomotives. I did the stills for this at a show mm. somewhere in the south, I, I, I've forgotten, and um, it was, I was very, very impressed, and they're a jolly bunch, the, <laughs> the South Hans Model Railway Club, isn't it? That's right. This is presented as a 3D picture, and uh, with, with a soundscape, isn't it? It's uh, quite effective, the sound of the, of the waves. Calling gulls as well. That's right, yes, yes. yes Squawking gulls. Yeah. But you're saying it, it, that there is a symmetry, isn't there? Because it's the South Hans Club, and That's our right. very first BRM layout was Midsummer Norton. Midsummer Norton from the, by the South Hans Club, yes, on the front cover. But this is, you know, it was a bit hackneyed the idea a few years ago, wasn't it? That perhaps unfairly that dear old Cyril and the railway model every other month was the Great Western Branch, Great Western Branch terminus, and um, this is, but. I think that's a resurgence of the Great Western. A resurgence of the Great Western. But the, the, again, although this isn't a prototype, there's this, I keep on coming back to this, but the research that's gone in, yes. the, the, um, the buildings, the rolling stock, the locomotives and so on, all beautifully observed. And an, an, an element of perspective modelling again, because mm -hmm. uh, when you go back towards the top of the cliff and the... Uh, uh, the promenade area, there's um, slightly smaller scale figures being being used, so it does give you that uh, that feeling of the layout actually being yes. much larger than it, it, it is. I think the back scene as well is almost mm. has a luminous quality. Yes, it does, yes. It's like a blue plastic, I think, which they play light on. Uh, I think he's, he's arranged the lighting to do that. Very, very but, effective. Yes, yeah, extremely very effective. And the good shed there, that's typical of Great mm. Western. Mm. Um, it used to be Tetbury, didn't it? Everybody modelled Tetbury. Tetbury was one of the well modelled ones, yes. Because the water tank was on top. That's right, on top but, of the uh, But that's a ty local typical shed. Brunellian good shed. And all these private owner, owner wagons or um, independent mm. railway wagons. And it does work impeccably, which is one might expect from the yes. engage. 
And again, is it stone one or stone two or stone three, the, the uh, colours? Yes. Um, Great Western colours? Yeah, I'd have to look in my Great Western uh, uh, books, but uh, yes, there were uh, different um, terms used mm. for, the, uh, for the various colours on the, on the uh, buildings. What's the period? It's sort of just post First World War, is it? It it's is, yes. You're, you're it's not grouping Great Western. 1920 ish, so you're right. just before the grouping, I think. Yes, I think um, so. And um, so you, you've got quite an interesting, peri uh, uh, an interesting variety of locomotives coming in. Too. Well, the, the, we saw a rail motor at, at one point, yes. and that was in Maroon. Wasn't That's right. It? So, yes. so perhaps their period is a little flexible. I think the Maroon was pre First World War, wasn't it? I think it was just before the First World if War. If I got yes. this wrong, by the yeah. way, I, um, I think it was Lake or something, wasn't it? The livery, actually. Yes. Maroon, but, uh, yes. Yes. Some, some sort of Lake. Some of the locomotives certainly mm. um, that um, the umber frames, the umber frames, and so on, mm. and that the, so the, the, maybe their their time scale is perhaps slightly it's a little flexible, a little bit, little yes. bit flexible. Oh, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's fantastic, and as I say, that the the operation is really slick. It's a mitre bleed being on the Dorset coast, isn't it? That's right. Yes, yes. Um, some interesting traffic on the branch line to the docks they yeah. um, said it's imported coal from uh, Somerset which is uh, for shipping use and then shingle mm. which is um, which was a big traffic at one time the couplings appear to be Spratt and Winkle is that I think it looks very much like they are on some of the maybe stalls. scale yes. shackles in the, yes where the yes. trains don't yes. divide but yeah. uh, no no Spratt and Winkle I tell a lie um Alex Jackson I think oh, right, might be yes. Alex Jackson very very fine yes very unobtrusive. We're talking about the Manchester Club again. Mm. But the back scene, I, th I think, is a photographic... Uh, the, the, the town is stitched in from um, photographs. Yes, that's right, yes. With, the, yes. obviously, aerials and so on taken out. Lovely. Terminus de Filiard with typical Great Western stuff, but... A resurgence, as you say, a, a revisitation. It has all the elements that one. Plenty of variety to keep operators and uh, viewers interested for well, quite a while, actually. Well, I think there's a case in point there. If you operated a layout like this, prototypically, mm. and this is not a criticism, this is, a, um, I've seen is several. A train an hour or something. Well, it, you'd have placards up saying, well, that's the train just <laughs> departed to the junction. It's not back until. I mean, Wolverhampton Club built a, a layout at Morton Hampstead, mm. and um, even on market day in the 1930s, never be two, two and a half hours between a train, well, you'd, you'd drive people away in their drones. Certainly one to look out for on the exhibition circuit. It certainly is, yes. Yes, yes. Um, very enjoyable layout to watch and uh, very enjoyable layout to operate. And it's like. been in BRM in the last three or four years, presumably. It has. Um, I can't remember. 2009, I think it was. Um, well, you photographed it. <laughs> My mind <laughs> fails. I'm losing it. But, uh, yes, very very worthwhile layout to, uh, to see. I hope you've enjoyed our brief look at 20 years of British Railway modelling. Uh, it doesn't seem that long ago that uh, we were presenting the very first issue, which we've got here. In fact, uh, a bit of a rarity, this is the actual dummy issue that was presented uh, to sell the concept to advertisers and publishers. So my thanks to Tony Wright. Well, my thanks to you, John. It has been a privilege, it's been a journey. I mean, I'm happily retired now and apart from a few bits and pieces for the mag. I don't really contribute that much. I don't do the photography anymore. And quite honestly, it's left me behind. You'd have seen earlier the dinosaur technology that I used to use, but it's been wonderful. I mean, it's nice to work with people that you get on with. It's even nicer to work with friends. So my thanks to everybody at BRM, all the staff, particularly Brownie, because he got me going. Instigator. Or, well, and I got it going. And um, pride is a deadly sin, isn't it? But I'm proud to have Plenty been associated to be it, yes. with an absolutely first-class product. Well, thanks very much indeed, Tony. And thanks to all our readers, all our contributors, and everyone who's been associated with British Railway modelling over the years. And we look forward to seeing you on our website, in the pages of BRM, and at our shows in the future. <laughs>